Hi, welcome back to Statics and Dynamics. Today we are going to talk about how to represent forces in three dimensions. You know, up to now you saw some things about how to represent forces in two dimensions in great detail. We are going to talk about how to represent forces in three dimensions. The options are somewhat limited because it's difficult to do pictorial versions of three dimensional forces. Okay, so people will generally tend to do something that's symbolic automatically. So just to make sure that we are all on the same page and so on. So let's look at this idea of pictorial to vectorial. Okay, so we got several ways to represent forces in 3D. But before we do that, let us see what we had uh, in 2D. We had the notation that looked like F at theta. And theta was, remember, CCW from positive X axis. You remember that right so please remember that's very important and here is our picture this is counterclockwise from positive x-axis and then we knew how to convert from here to there the procedure remember I told you no formula is only procedure the procedure says f equals fx comma fy which turns out to be f cos theta f sine theta you don't have to worry about the signs if angle theta is, is counterclockwise from the positive x-axis and to go from here to here we had the notation that uh, f equals square root of fx squared plus fy squared and theta was equal to sine of fy and then cos inverse fx over f you remember this right so that's how we convert back and forth. So this is very easy. Now we have to do the same kinds of things in 3D. So let's start. The first way to do in 3D is to, here is the three dimensional force and you can already see it's kind of messy. The first angle, so now we have uh, three angles. Okay, they are called theta x, which is angle between f vector and uh, x axis theta y is angle between f vector and y axis and theta z is angle between f vector and z axis the basic idea and you know what hots means right you remember that vaguely so let me remind you higher order thinking skill the higher order thinking skill here is to find the unit vector from the geometrical information given. That's how you find the direction. So we already know magnitude is F. The geometrical information is theta x, theta y, theta z. By the way, you don't need three. I will talk to you about that. You need only two pieces of ge geometrical information. Right now, let's say we have all these three things. So what am I going to do? I'm going to calculate fx equals f cos theta x, fy equal to f cos theta y, no sine theta here, so everything is cos theta, f cos theta z. The reason is very simple. This is the component of f in direction x and so on so this one and this one and this one so where did i get this unit vector unit vector is e equals cos theta x cos theta y cos theta z so f vector equals magnitude times direction so this is magnitude and this is direction okay so this is my direction vector which is a unit vector now because it's a unit vector e dotted with e must be equal to 1 so cos squared theta x plus cos squared theta y plus cos squared theta z 
must be equal to 1. So what it means is that I need only two of them. The third one can be found from this equation. So I need only two pieces, two out of three angles are needed. The last one I can obtain from here. So you understand how to go from here to here. The reverse is very easy because I will get cos theta x equals f over fx over f and so on. Cos theta y equal to f y over y f and cos theta z is f z over f. So you can go like that. So if I know fx, fy, fz, I can find cos theta x, cos theta y, cos theta z and so I can draw it. This is not terribly useful because we will not always uh, do uh, theta x, theta y, theta z. That's not a common thing to do. But nevertheless, you get the idea, right? Now, let's look at the much more common situation, which is the following. Now, this time I am given force along some line. This is the most common situation and all computer programs, all of them use this kind of a setup, not angles. So remember in 3D, typically angles are not the convenient ones. It's much better to do the following. So this is my force F. Okay. And it's along this line. And what do I know about the line? I am given two points on that line. Okay, so remember our higher order thinking skill, it is to find the unit vector from the geometrical information. So what is the geometrical information? It's this location and that location. And then I only know magnitude of f. So let's not worry about the direction. Let's look at the magnitude. So for example, all I might know is, uh, let's see, there you go. Okay. I know this, I know this, I know the magnitude. So how do I go from here to there? Well, let's see. First thing, remember, no formulas, only procedure. What you should know is the procedure. I'm going to list the procedure in words and you should memorize the procedure. Don't memorize the formulae, memorize the procedure. This is one of the most useful procedures. We will see this again and again and again and again all over the place. Okay, so it's a good idea to memorize it and it's easy to memorize, nothing there. The higher order idea is you find the unit vector from the geometrical information. That's all. How you do that is up to you. So if you're comfortable with it, you can skip and you know how it is. But if you don't, then you have to remember the procedure. First step, find the line vector. So this line vector is the vector that goes from the uh, tail to tip and it is obtained from tip minus tail. So the line vector is x tip minus x tail, y tip minus y tail, z tip minus z tail. So notice I didn't put this as tip or tail. The line vector which is tip and which is tail is given by this arrow. So the tip to tail is going this way. This is the hardest part by the way. I see many people make a mistake about which way is the tip and which way is the tail. So the direction of this thing tells you I have to take this as the tip and that as the tail. So this is x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, z2 minus z1. If my arrow was like this, then it would be the other way around. x1 minus x2, y1 minus y2, z1 minus z2. You see what I mean? So you have to remember that the tip and tail are not determined by where I draw the vector. It is determined by the direction of the arrow. So tip tail determined by direction of arrow. That's very important to know. Okay. So next find. So let me, so because I want you to be able to see this better, I'll erase this part. There we go. 
The next thing is to do is to find the line length. You know how to do the line length, right? It's the magnitude of the line length, line vector. Nothing there. It's easy. It's a standard way of calculating magnitude. Sorry, this should be a plus. Right? So you know how to calculate the magnitude. Now we are ready. We know how to find the unit vector. Direction is line vector or line length. So line vector, line length, this is the most important thing to memorize. Direction is line vector, line vector versus line length, which is this divided by that. This is 1, this is 2, and so it is 1 over 2, which is L vector over L scalar. Please remember, you cannot divide by a vector, so you better not put it the other way. Okay? Then, force is magnitude times direction. What else is there? I mean, that's easy. You just do F times E. That's all. Okay? You get this thing now. There's a four-step procedure. And the real step is item number three. Line vector divided by line length is what you have to remember. And the line vector is determined by tip minus tail and the tip is determined by the direction of the arrow okay of the force okay and then everything else is pretty straightforward what you need to do is after this you can go and see the worked example where we show how to use this okay and it's a fairly straightforward algorithm fairly straightforward procedure you should just know this so we have done this 3d stuff so, just to remember that if you are given the vector like this, if you want to find components, the component of the fourth in the ith direction in terms of geometry is magnitude of the force times cosine of the angle it makes with the positive ith axis. Okay, again this is useful to know because you will be using it in all over the situation. Okay. Well, that's it. Thank you.